Hi, boys and girls. Um, today we're going to be covering lesson three, four, intercepts of graphs. Okay. Um, the basically what we're going to be talking about here, um, reading over here, we're talking about the x-intercept and the y-intercept. It's just what, like what it sounds like. X-intercept is where does the graph intersect the x-axis. The y-intercept asks you where does the graph intersect the y-axis. Uh, not all graphs intersect both. Um, and some graphs intersect them more than once. You can see here we have a curved line. This one intersects the x-axis one, two, three times, okay? Um, but it only intersects y one time, okay? Um, we're also going to be talking about where a function is positive and negative. Positive is anything above the x-axis. So here the function is positive, and we describe that by saying it's positive between, oh, what is this, negative 2 and negative 4. The graph is positive. It's negative oh, between negative 2 and a half, something like that. Anytime it's below the x-axis, it's called negative. Anytime it's above the x-axis, it's called positive. Okay. Now, the intercepts, the x-intercepts are also called the roots, okay, or the zeros of an equation. So, here we have use the graph to, um, get my pen fired up, use the graph to estimate the x and y intercepts of the function and describe where the function is positive and negative, okay. So the x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. That's going to be this point right here, okay? This is the point 3, 0. That is our x-intercept. The y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses y. So that would be this point right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would be 0, 6. Notice that the x-intercept is the point where y is 0, and the y-intercept is the point where x is 0. Oftentimes, students confuse those two. Okay? A function is positive when its graph lies above the x-axis, or when, let's see, above the x-axis would be anywhere where x is 3 or less. Okay? So x has to be uh, less than or equal to 3. That's where this graph is positive, okay? It's negative anywhere x is greater than. I guess I shouldn't have used the or equal to here. That would have been, it's better to describe it this way. When x is less than 3, the graph is positive. When x is greater than 3, the graph is negative because then it goes below the x-axis. So if x is less than 3, it's positive. If it's, le if it's greater than 3, it's negative. And then this point right here, this is neither, this is when x is 0, so it's neither positive nor negative. That's why this one was wrong, because this would have included the 0. Okay. All right, use the graph to estimate the x and y intercepts of the function and describe where the function is positive and negative. Okay, this is our x-intercept. So our x-intercept is at the point negative 2, 0. Our y-intercept is right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's at 0, negative 6. So we can go over here and maybe eliminate some of these. Um, the x-intercept, negative 2, 0. The y-intercept, 0, negative 6. This one's got potential. x-intercept, 0, negative 6. That's not right. That's the y-intercept, so b's not right. x-intercept, negative 2, 0. y-intercept, 0, negative 6. This one's got potential x-intercept 0, negative 6. Nope, this one's wrong. So we've narrowed our choices to a and c. Let's talk about where the function is positive and negative, okay? It's positive when x is less than negative 2. So we're looking for one that says x is less than negative 2. This one says x is greater than negative 2. That is not where it's positive. It's positive from here this way when x is less than negative 2. So that means that c is the correct answer. 
Where is it negative? It's negative this way because this is all below, all right? So anything to the right of this point would make the function negative, okay? And so that's why this says x is greater than negative 2. That makes it negative. Okay. All right, so now we're going to be looking at some nonlinear functions. Now, we don't actually learn parabolas until a later chapter, um, but they are going to introduce them as far as the um, intercepts and things go here. We have this is called a parabola. Um, don't call it a parabola. That's not right. It's a parabola. Okay. Um, this is two x-intercepts. It has this point right here, and it also has this point right here, okay? This point is 1, 2, 3. This one is 3, 0, and this one is negative 4, 0. Okay, those are our x-intercepts. Our y-intercept, hmm, you're going to have to estimate that. Um, I don't... It might go through exactly negative 2, negative 12. Um, let's say the uh, y-intercept is 0, negative 12. We'll go with that. The graph is positive when x, now positive is above x, okay? So when x is greater than 3 and when x is less than negative 4. It's negative between negative 4 and 3. Okay. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> okay, so here's our check. Determine whether each ordered pair represents an x-intercept, a y-intercept, or neither. 1, 0. 1, 0 is right here, and that is an x-intercept. 0, 1 is right here. Oh, no, it's right here. 0, 1. And that is neither. It is not an x or a y intercept. Okay. Describe where the function is positive and negative. Okay. Well, here are our cutoff points. From here to here, it's positive. So from 1 to between 1 and 4, it's positive. Okay. So x is, let's see, how, we can write this as a compound inequality. We can say 1 here and 4 here. So x must be greater than 1 and less than 4. Okay, that's what we're looking for then. x must be greater than 1 and less than 4. This one says x is between 1 and 4. X is, so all three of these are still in the running here. Okay, so we're going to have to look at where it's negative. It's negative when x is less than 1, x is less than 1, and x is greater than 4. So which one of these says it's negative when x is less than 1 or greater than 4? Well, we can eliminate b because b describes between 1 and 4. That's where it's positive. So let's eliminate b. And we've already eliminated a. Not very straight line. Let's go, let's go that way. <laughs> So which one of these is accurate? This one says when x is greater than 1 and x is less than 4. That's not what we said. We said x has to be less than 1 and greater than 4. So x is less than 1 and greater than 4. D is winner, winner, chicken dinner. I wonder where that saying comes from, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't know. Getting ready to have winner, winner, Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, find the intercepts from a graph. Okay, so they're giving you a graph and asking you to find the intercepts. Um, they're trying to make it into a real-world problem. The graph shows the height of a ball for each second x that it is airborne. Use the graph to estimate the x and y intercepts of the function, where the function is positive and negative, and interpret the meanings in the context of the situation. Now, let's first of all, let's think about this. If you're throwing a ball up into the air, it goes up into the air, and then it comes down. Is that ever going to be negative? Is this ever going to go below the x-axis? Well, that would have to be some ball, like maybe a lead ball, and maybe the ground is like sand or something. Then it could possibly go into the negatives. But if you're just standing out in the middle of a field and you throw a ball up in the air, when it hits the ground, it doesn't go any further than that. So I'm going to take go out on a limb here and say this is never going to be negative, okay? Um, so the x-intercept, where does it intersect x? Right here. 
okay? X-intercept is 9. That means that the ball will hit the ground after 9 seconds, okay? Because it's trapped. This is time here. This is after so many minutes and, or seconds, and then after 9 seconds, it hits the ground. The Y-intercept is 4. This means that at time of zero, because this would be time zero, the ball was at a height of four feet. Probably, I guess, if you're standing and you're going to throw it, it's probably about four feet. The function is positive when x is between zero and nine, which means that the ball is in the air for nine seconds. No portion of the graph shows that the function is negative. Okay, so here we have the graph shows the number of people Y at a gym X hours after the gym opens. Okay, use the graph to estimate the X and Y intercepts. Okay, the X intercept would be what right here? All right, the X intercept is at 12, 0. We're estimating, it might be a little off. The Y intercept is right about here, so that would be at 0. 20. Okay. Which statements describe this kind of interesting, the gym occupancy? Um, it starts off kind of low and then it builds and then there's a lull and then it, it goes up steadily during the day and the peak time would be like eight hours after they open. And then slowly starts, to, it, well not slowly, this is pretty steep actually, it really declines after that point. Which statements describe the meaning of the X and Y intercepts in the context of the situation? Select all that apply. There were 20 people at the gym when it opened. Okay. Yes, I agree with that because this shows that there are 20 people at zero time. So zero hours after it opened, which would be the opening time, there were 20 people there. The gym closed after 20 hours. No, the gym closed after 12 hours. All right. Which is what C says. The gym closed after 12 hours. There were 12 people at the gym when it opened. No, there was no one at the gym when it opened. That's also wrong. Okay. Find intercepts from a table. Okay, now see, here's the interesting thing. The intercepts are here. We have 0, 150, and we have 40, 0. Those are our intercepts. The question is, which one is the X and which one is the Y? Okay, hang on a second. Okay, sorry about that, interruptions. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're trying to figure out, remember I said the x-intercept is when y is zero, and the y-intercept is when x is zero. So this is how you would figure out which one's which. The x-intercept is where y equals zero. So the x-intercept is 40, zero. The y-intercept is where x is zero, so the y-intercept is 0, 150. Okay. Describe what the intercepts mean in the context of the situation. Well, we have to read the problem to do that. Violet starts the semester with $150 in her student lunch account. Each day, she spends $375 on lunch. The table shows the function relating the amount of money remaining in her lunch account to the number of days Violet has purchased lunch. So here, on, on day 0, she had $150. She eats lunch, each, eats lunch, each lunch, and I can't say that three times fast. <laughs> and down here, after 40 days, she has no money left in her account. So the x-intercept means that after buying lunch for 40 days, Violet will have zero left in her lunch account, or it will take Violet 40 days to use all the money in her lunch account. The y-intercept means that Violet's lunch account has $150 after buying lunch for zero days, or the beginning balance of her lunch account is 150. I don't think I've ever had $150 in my lunch account, ever. I used to have to pack my lunch. Ashley received a gift card to the movie theater for her birthday. The table shows the amount of money remaining on her gift card Y after X trips to the movie theater. Okay, so after zero trips, the gift card originally was worth $90. All right, and how much does it cost to go to the movie theater one time? $9. Okay, after 10 trips, she will have no dollars. So the y-intercept is when x is 0. So that would be 0, 90. 
Find the x-intercept and describe what it means in the context of the situation. Here's our x-intercept, 10, 0. The x-intercept is when y is 0. All right, um, 10, 0, the initial balance on the gift card was $10. Nope, that's not it. That's not right. It's this one maybe. After 10 trips to the movies, there will be no money left on the gift card. That's our winner right there. Okay, here's where it gets a little weird. And I, I was like struggling with this myself um, because uh, I don't understand part of it, but I'll, I'll explain it to you. I'll tell you how they do it. It says um, the solution or root of an equation is any value that makes the equation true. A zero is an x-intercept of the graph of the function. For example, the root of 3x equals 6 is 2, okay, because that makes it true. A linear equation like 3x equals 6 has at most one root, while a nonlinear equation like x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0 may have more than one. Okay? Now, we're going to make the leap from equation to related function. You'll notice that these, these examples didn't have any y's in them. Okay? They're going to give you an equation that may or may not be equal to 0. If it's equal to 0, it's a no-brainer. Like this one here was already equal to zero. So you just change the zero to f of x or y, which is what they have done here. And then you have a, something you can graph, okay? This one was not all um, equal to zero. This one was 3x equals six. So in that case, you have to make it equal to zero by getting everything on the left-hand side, all right? So you want to get rid of everything on the right-hand side. So you would subtract 6 from both sides, and that gives you 3x minus 6 equals 0. And you always have to put every, all the numbers on the left-hand side. That's a thing. If you put them on the right-hand side, you get the inverse, and that's not what they want. They want the left-hand side. All right? So then what you can do is you can say, okay, so f of x is 3x minus 6, or you can say y is 3x minus 6. And then you can graph it, and that helps you to find the zeros, okay? The graph of a related function can be used to find the solutions of an equation. The related function is formed by solving the equation for zero and then replacing zero with f of x or y, which is what I did. Uh, values of x for which f of x equals zero are located at the x-intercept, blah, 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 blah. And it goes down here to say two is the solution of this equation. Two is the root of this equation. 2 is the 0 of f of x equals 3x minus 6, and it's also the x-intercept of f of x equals 3x minus 6. No. So we've give, we've give, they've given us this negative 2x plus 7 equals 1. All right? We need to get everything on the left-hand side, so we have to get rid of this one guy. That will give us negative 2x plus 6 equals 0. And so then we would have f of x equals negative 2x plus 6. Okay, so here's what they've done the same thing here. They want you to subtract 1 from both sides and then this gives us 6 equals 0 and then you can graph this. The negative 2x plus 6, all right? Our y-intercept is at 6. Our slope is negative 2, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, and we can graph the line. Then we can find where it will intersect the x-axis. It intersects the x-axis at 1, 2, 3. So that would be 3, 0. This is the x-intercept, or 0, which is also the root of the equation. So the solution of the equation is 3, 0. Okay. Fun times? Having fun yet? I'm wondering what those people are doing out in that road. <laughs> I'm so distracted. They're pouring the, the uh, or they're paving the road today. It's very distracting. So now we have a nonlinear equation, and they're going to ask you to graph it. Now, luckily, they've given you the graph. Um, you have not learned to graph parabolas, so you would either have to plot x and y points on a table or perhaps use your Desmos graphing calculator to find this. Um, they've given us the equation x squared minus 4 equals negative 3. Okay, we need to get rid of everything on the right hand side, so we're going to add 3 to both sides. Okay, which means this is now 0. All right, so we can graph the left side of the equation x squared minus 4x plus 3, which will look like this. 
The graph intersects the x-axis at here and here, 2 and 4. I guess we should probably put those as points. You could put 2, 0, and 4, 0. Uh, these are the x-intercepts or zeros, which are also the roots of the equation. So the solutions of the equation are 2 and 4. Solve an equation of a horizontal line. Okay, now a horizontal line is not going to have an x-intercept. Okay, it's going to have a y-intercept. As you can see here, it's going to cross y at some point, but it's never going to touch x. All right, so here we have 4x plus 3 equals 4x minus 5. We want to get rid of everything on the right-hand side, so the first thing they want you to do is add 5 to both sides. Then we simplify, and that gives us plus 8 here. And then you want to subtract 4x from both sides, but when you subtract 4x from both sides, we lose our 4x's. And we end up with 8 equals 0, which is a not true statement, okay? But remember, we're just going to replace 0 with y. So we end up with an equation which is just y equals 8, all right? Or f of x equals 8, which can be graphed as a horizontal line at 8. The graph does not intersect the x-axis. This means that there is no x-intercept, and therefore there is no solution. The solution would be where it intersects x. I know, what's the point? Some of these chapters, I say the same thing. I'm like, really? What is the point of this? Okay, and I know this is dragging on, so I'll try to pick up the pace a little bit here. Equations on the graphs of the related function are shown. Write the related function and its zeros under the appropriate graph. Okay, so this one, we have 2 equals 1 half x. We have to get everything on the left-hand side. So the related function, when we subtract 1 half x from both sides, will give us negative 1 half x plus 2, okay? And that would be y equals, right, or f of x. And the zeros would be just here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. So, 4, okay. And they don't want the x-intercept. They just want the y, or just where it intersects x, okay. This is a horizontal line. If you subtract 3x from both sides, that drops off. If you subtract 2 from both sides, you get 5. So this is going to be f of x equals 5. All right, and there are no zeros because it does not intersect x. This one, we have x squared minus 6 equals x. We would subtract x from both sides. That gives us x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. So the related function is f of x equals x squared minus x minus 6. And the zeros are at negative 2 and, is it 3? Negative 2 and 3. If you wrote those as points, it would be negative 2, 0 and 3, 0. I'm having a good time. I don't know about you guys. I think this is super fun. Oh, good. This looks even more fun than the one before it. Haley is ordering invitations for her graduation party. She has $40 to spend, and each invitation costs 96 cents. The function m equals 40 minus 96p represents the amount of money m Haley has left after ordering p party invitations. Find the zero of the function. Describe what this value means in the context of this situation. Okay, so they want you to, I'm not, I'm not answering all this. Basically, we're going to solve this, okay? Um, let me move this up. I don't think I'll load there it is. Okay. So first of all, let's think about this. She's got 40 bucks, and each invitation is 96 cents. That's pretty much a dollar, right? So I'm thinking right off the bat, she can buy, you know, 40 invitations, maybe 41. I don't know. Um, so when I estimate the solution, I'm going to think 40 to 41, maybe 41. And then check the solution. Well, what I would do is, let's see, is she starts off, when, before she buys any invitations, she has $40. Okay, go away, go away, okay? She has $40, so that's our y-intercept. She had $40 after zero invitations. Now, as she buys each invitation, her money's going to go down by 96 cents each time. So what I would do then is I would take $40 and divide it by 96 cents.
$40 divided by 0.96 equals. So it looks like she can buy 41 and she's going to have some change left over. So she can buy 41 invitations. What does your solution mean in the context of the situation? It means that when she starts off, she has $40. After she buys 41 invitations, she will have no money left. That's basically what they want there. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this section. Now, there's a lot in this section, and I'm going to be assigning just the most simple of problems um, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, because tomorrow will be Wednesday. Thursday, we will do the practice problems, and um, then we will have a small assignment for Friday. Okay, um, this is uh, Thanksgiving humor. I sure hope this doesn't turn into a tradition. <laughs> the men playing football and the women doing the dishes. Yes, I'm afraid it has. But that gives us our secret word for this video. It's football. All right. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'm going to go watch those guys pave this road. And uh, I'll see you in Zoom. Bye, guys.